those who are watching online, good morning to you. So are you excited to worship the Lord with us together? Amen. So before we sing this song, I just want to read this passage from Psalms 40. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, He set my feet on a rock firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth and a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. Amen. Now in the situation, in this chaotic um, uh, situation all around the world, no? what we're going to do is just to trust, put our trust in the Lord and just be at rest in God's presence. As the Bible says, the Lord heard our cry, amen, because we are His children. I'm going to worship Him together. Let's sing this song, let's put a trust in the Lord.
us, we just want to praise you and honor you, God. We just want to bring you back all the glory and the honor that you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. morning, TGFM people. How are you all? How's your home? We miss you already. <laughs> so this morning, uh, we're going to share the Word of God. I'm, I want to talk about a new world and a new day because uh, what's facing us today is truly a new world and a new day. So I pray this message will bless your hearts, it will encourage you, it will somehow guide you, and may this um, find meaning no, sa inyuhang, in your experiences. Lord, we commit to you our word this morning. I pray this word will comfort your people. I pray all of us will be edified. I pray your Holy Spirit will guide us. I pray, Lord, it will sustain us in these difficult times, even the days ahead. Lord, I pray your word will sustain us. Your word will continue to encourage us. And I pray, Lord, you will grant us creativity to continue fellowshipping, ministering to one another, even in these difficult times. So we commit this uh, sharing of your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No? So this morning, I'll talk about a new world and a new day. No, I feel led of the Lord to share from Jeremiah 29, verses 1 to 14. No, one of the verses here is a very familiar verse to all of us. So um, I just feel this is something for us, no? especially as we prepare for the days ahead, no? especially here in Butuan. I pray these words will encourage us. No? So follow me as I read uh, in your Bible uh, from verse 1. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar has carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. No? So Jeremiah was writing to the exiles, to all the people who survived no? the conquest of Nebuchadnezzar. And then verse 2, uh, Jeremiah explained when this letter was written by him. So he, it, he says here, this was after King Jehoiakim or King Jeconiah and the queen mother, the court officials and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem the skilled workers and the artisans had gone into exile from Jerusalem. No, so the time they were taken captive was the year 597 BC. No, so Jeremiah is saying here that this letter was written after 597 BC. Verse 3, so Jeremiah entrusted the letter to Elasa, son of Shaphan, and to Gemariah, son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. No, so at that time, the king in uh, Jerusalem was King Zedekiah. No, the former king, King Jeconiah, was already in exile. So Zedekiah sent Jeremiah's letter through uh, one of his men. No? Uh, verse 4, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Take note, the Lord says here, I am the one who sent you on exile to Babylon. Verse 5, build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there and do not 
decrease. No, so these are instructions what they are to do. No, as they are as they remain in exile for the next seventy years, and then. Uh, verse 7, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. No, Because at that time, uh, prophets were saying the exile will only be a very short time. No, very soon you will return to Jerusalem. But Jeremiah was saying, no, no, the Lord is saying you will be staying there for 70 years. Do not believe the false prophets. No, and even don't listen to the dreams that you want, to, you want them to say. No, the things you want to hear from them, don't listen to those things. Verse 9, they are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. And this is what the Lord says, no? verse 10, When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill the good promise, my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. No? So this is the verse most of us, if not all of us, are very familiar with. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have, I have banished you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. No? So these are beautiful words that we find here. I really believe some of these things will resonate with our hearts uh, today. No? So I'll give you the background no, of this uh, chapter, chapter 29. So Jeremiah actually records, uh, Jeremiah 29 records, several letters no, that uh, Jeremiah wrote no, at that time to the exiles in Babylon. So verses 1 to 14 is really the main letter. But there are other letters mentioned here in chapter 29. No? And those other letters are in verse 15 to 19. That's another letter. That's the second letter. The other one, third letter, is uh, found in verse 25 to 32. But our message today will focus only on the main letter, verses 1 to 14. So the main letter, as we have seen earlier no, in the verse, it was sent a few years after the exile, which happened in 597 BC. So they were already there, and Jeremiah sent them this uh, first letter. So the background of this chapter actually can be can be seen in verses 1 to 3 no you can check in your bible verses 1 to 3 and you'll see there the background no of this letter no let's read verse 1 so this is the text of the letter that the prophet jeremiah sent from jerusalem to all the surviving people that are in babylon no verse 2 he explains this was sent after 597 bc no so that's the background the historical situation of the letter uh, was the situation in 597 BC. Now, what happened at that time, 597 BC, sa exile? Around 3,000 Jews have been exiled with Jehoiakim. Among them, a number of priests and prophets, along with the royal household. No, so 3,000 uh, Jews, including their leaders at that time, were, were carried off to Babylon uh, uh, in exile. In Jerusalem, no, well, when they were already there in Jerusalem, Jeremiah heard that some exiled false prophets were predicting no, that the exile will only be a short time and they will return soon. So when Jeremiah heard about that, no, he wrote this letter telling them not to believe these false uh, prophets. Jeremiah's letters warned the exiles against this deception and urged them to wait 
uh, patiently for God's time. Jeremiah said the exile to Babylon was divine discipline for a disobedient people. No, a quick end to the exile. Jeremiah said if the exile was very quick, then how can God discipline us? No, it will be useless. No, if if it was very very short. No, that's why uh, God said it will be seventy years. No, because He is disciplining His people in these uh, seventy years. He instructed them no to remain in Babylon for seventy years. So maoni ang instruction ni Jeremiah. No, build houses, settle down, plant gardens, harvest, marry, give your sons and daughters in marriage, and increase in number there. Do not decrease, prosper no, in Babylon. No, that's what he said. That's what the Lord said. No, the Jews. Now, what we see here no, in our passage is the Jews at that time entered a new world and a new day. No, Jeremiah instructed them to do what to do and urged them to flourish and make the world known and make and wait for his promise in that new day that they are facing. Now what they experience at that time is the same experience we are experiencing today. Because believe it or not, we are facing a new world today. No, now is a new world and today we are in a new time. No, so this is our reality now, no, in 2020. So for all of us today, we have also been thrust into our new reality. None of us expected this. No, uh, we are thrust into this situation. We are now facing uh, a potential kanang lockdown no, in our city. So it is a new world for us, just as it was for them at that time. It's also a new world for us today and a new day for all of us. So what should we do now? No? Jeremiah instructed them what to do. What should we do now? No? So we will reflect on this passage and gain insight no, on the things we might need to do in our time today. So the first thing I'd like to share is the first thing I believe the Lord wants us to do is first we must learn wisdom. No, in all of this, in all of our circumstances now, we need to learn wisdom. Just like he instructed them to learn wisdom from their 70 years in captivity. No, so verse 4, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says to those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Take note, no, God said, I carried you. I was the one. Not King Nebuchadnezzar, I was the one who did that because I want to teach you something and you need to learn wisdom no, in your experience. No, so according to the commentary, no, we do not have a word-for-word -word record of Jeremiah's letter. No, dinisa atong book of Jeremiah. It's not the word-for-word -word letter of the original letter. No, pero we have here the gist, no, the content no ang idea no sa iyang what he originally wrote and the gist of the letter is very clear no that you learn no you obey you submit i allow this to happen and you need to learn no from these things no so underlying the main letter is the assumption that though uh, nebuchadnezzar deported them into captivity it nebuchadnezzar was only an agent of the of the Lord Almighty. No agent trust in Nebuchadnezzar sa Ginoo to do the Lord's will, no for God's will to be done. No ultimately, the Lord himself was the one who brought them to ex to exile. And since the Lord's will was behind it, Judah must learn wisdom and learn God's lessons from their experience. It's the same with us today. No, it is not because of COVID virus <laughs> or because of people who spread the virus. Pero I believe the Lord allowed all of these things not only to happen in Butuan, but to happen in the whole world. No, this is global pandemic. No, so the Lord allowed these things and He did not exempt God's people, His people, because He, all, he wants all of us to learn something out of this. 
no so we need to learn from our experience no so what happened sa mga Jews no they were stripped of everything no gitangtang sa ilatanan no and they needed to relearn the basics no when they arrived in Babylon no they had to start all over again no mag start na po sila sa basics of how to worship God how to fellowship because everything was stripped from them nawala na good ang temple no no more priesthood everything was removed so they had to go back to the basics i believe that's what that's what we need to learn also at this time no when total lockdown happens in butuan we cannot come out of our houses we need to go back to the basics no and uh, continue no in our faith even when we're all stuck our homes no so at the end of the day Actually, there are only a few basic things that should matter to the people of God. No? And when we learn about these basic things, that's wisdom. No? Kung kabalo lang ta, unsa ni nga mga basic things. No? And I enumerated them here no? sa atong sermon. So what are these things? No, four things I'd like to mention here. The very basic things. When we master all of these things, that's wisdom. No, and we will continue with our faith regardless of our circumstance. No, number one, most important, relationship with God. No, kung wala na church, wala na fellowship, wala na Bible study, no, ang mabili na lang what will remain should be your relationship with God because the pastor cannot teach you that. No, you have you should be the one to pursue that. No, it's between you and the Lord. Your relationship with God, no, your faith walk with Him, ang imong journey, kauban niya, kining lockdown is part of your journey with the Lord. Okay, so you need to learn the faith walk, you need to be hearing from the Lord, no, and you need to be obeying the Lord even in this situation. Mopunto sa ilaha, that's also what they needed to learn no, when they went into exile in Babylon. That's the first one, relationship with God. Second, worship. No, we need to learn to worship even without the worship team. No, we're still so blessed. No, our worship team can still give us worship songs. What if the time happens nga we cannot anymore broadcast no, our worship services and you're left all alone with your family? You have to worship by your own no, at home. No, so basic ka na siya, learning to worship God by yourself. Okay, praising Him thanking him praying to him and expressing a heart that is grateful no gratitude ngadto sa Ginoo number 3 is glorifying god no and i'd like to clarify what i mean by glorifying god here no so i have it here sa screen glorifying god means to creatively flourish where you are mo flourish ka and glorify god there where you are in spite of your circumstance. So, kung full lockdown na, you cannot glorify God anymore in the community. You cannot glorify God anymore in the church. Then, ahana may nabilin, you should glorify God where you are, at home, no? And flourish there, no? Excel in glorifying God there, at home, no? Washing dishes, helping your parents, everything, no? <laughs> Just flourish where you are. Okay? So, mauna ang glorifying God wherever you are, whatever the circumstances are. And number four is to continue blessing others. Kung wala na kayo pwede i-bless, wala na tayo community service, then you bless people at home. <laughs> we should continue doing that. No, So, these are some basic things. This might not be a complete list, pero uh, definitely these are very very basic okay relationship with God worship glorifying God and blessing others wherever we are whatever the circumstances are no so when lockdown happens <laughs> only a few things truly matter these things relationship with God worship glorifying God creatively flourishing where you are and blessing others. Now, that's the first thing I'd like to share this morning. Now, the second one that, uh, that's in my heart I'd like to share to you is we must adapt to God's 
extraordinary will and strange ways because we live in extraordinary times. No, we cannot go back to the old things because wala na, we're facing new things. We're facing a new world, a new time, and we must adapt. There's no other way to survive but to adapt and move forward. We must adapt to God's extraordinary will and strange ways. No, So verse 5, ingon ni Jeremiah sa ilaha, you'll be in Babylon, you'll be exiles. Everything is gone, the temple, the priesthood, the community of God's people, wala na. What should you do there? Adapt, build houses, settle down, plant gardens, and eat the harvest of your gardens. Marry, give your children in marriage. And then he said, increase. Mo, dapat mo increase mo. No? Do not even to increase in number and do not decrease. No, ayaw mo kunhod. Tubo hinoon mo. Bahalag na bago na ni nga pang hitabo, bago na nga situation, you need to continue to grow and flourish. Increase in number there and do not decrease. And also, verse 7, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. No, so do not curse COVID virus. No, you, there's nothing you can do by cursing COVID. Okay, just bless the Lord, praise God for everything that's happened. No, and pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. No, I'd like to make application of that verse later on. No, that's very, very important. According to the commentary, no, regarding this uh, adapting. So, verse 5 to 7, according to the Bible scholars, uh, verses 5 to 7 are so remarkable for their advice to the exiles that they are without parallel in ancient literature. Nothing in ancient literature has been written that way, no? that the Lord commanded them, in spite of ilang captivity, to flourish. No? Every other nation that has been conquered there was no, this, this did not happen, no? that they wanted to prosper, build houses, and prosper. Only with the Jews, these things have happened. No? So, walay parallel ana in ancient literature, what you can read in verses 5 to 7. The exiles were to settle in Babylon and live normal lives there, and even pray for their captors. Wala pagid na nahitabo ever in any people that has been conquered. It only happened to the Jews, no? Because God, the God we serve is an extraordinary God and He will help His people face extraordinary things. Amen? So, mo na'y mahitabo sa ato ah, even in our difficult situation. No, Jeremiah's command for them to pray for their pagan captors was really unique in ancient literature, no? So, that's what the Bible scholars commented commented on no so they would have also considerable freedom sa ilang exile so na i favor sa god because they can still move around they can still have businesses no unlike other peoples nga na conquer nga na enslave gid sila pero they have god's favor the same with us no even in lockdown god's people will have god's favor even in lockdown amen so mo na mahitabo sa ato ah. expect that the favor of God in spite of everything. So, Jeremiah said, instead of expecting an early return to their homeland, they were to settle down in Babylon. And they were to build houses. Increase in number and not to decrease. Amazing, no amazing thing. Amazing things God can do in difficult times for his people no so we should expect that for us no side note just a little side note because they were commanded to get married no jeremiah actually encouraged them to marry jewish wives no wala sila gipa marry og mga uh, pagan wives uh, not foreign wives no to fulfill the law of moses no they were forbidden to intermarry no with other nations because the seed of abraham must continue according to the promise of the Lord to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. No? So, 
we have to take note of that. And history also shows that in all of the centuries of the dispersion of the Jews, you know, they follow this pattern. Where, wherever they are dispersed all over the world, you know, mo settle down sila, mo prosper sila, even until today, you know, wherever you, you, you see in the world, you know, in the U.S., ang mga Jews are the people prospering. Dato sila kaayo you know, all over the world, you know, ang mga Jews. Because God blessed them and has favor upon them. No, I think it's the same with us, God's people. No, so we should expect the favor of the Lord even in difficult times. No, seek peace and prosperity of the captors. No, that's what they were commanded to do. What an unusual advice. No, only ang comment no sa mga Bible scholars. What an unusual advice for Jeremiah to give his exile countrymen. No, amazing na siya. Now, no, apply na to na. Let's bring it closer to home. Now, all of us today, we are in strange, unprecedented, and extraordinary times. God is giving us also an unusual exhortation today. No, so the exhort po takaron sa ginoo uh, to do extraordinary things, unusual things. No, dili na to usual ni. We have never expected these things to happen to us. No, so that I believe that is what the Lord is exhorting us to do. No, as we go to our homes, when lockdown in Botuan comes, no, we are to do these things. No, what are these things? No, I enumerated several things here. Number one, no, how should we adapt? Number one here is be creative in doing our community life together. As a local church, we need to become creative because we cannot anymore do what we used to do. No, kung mag lockdown na, we cannot do whatever we, we did before. No, we have to be creative now in still continuing our community life. No, because even though we gather or not gather, we still are God's community. No, God's people, the community of God's people. No, so we have to be creative. No, so I encourage you, no, I encourage you to be creative no, in ways of connecting to God, ways of connecting to the brethren in TJFM. Use whatever means, use all kinds of platforms, no, uh, online, mga app, whatever. No, ang mga teams na to, ministry heads, I instructed the ministry heads to organize their teams and continue fellowshipping even online na fellowship no ang mga pastors are going to explore no an experiment on other platforms we can use so we can still continue our community life even in a different setting no so we have to become creative i encourage you to start something creative and if you find something works share it with us you know so all of us can also use that and benefit all of us here in TJFM family. So that's the first one. We need to become creative in doing our community life together. Number two, Jeremiah exhorted them, increase, flourish, and grow no, in our new way of doing community life. So kining mga new things, new methods that we will discover, we are to grow in them, flourish in them, excel make them excellent so that everyone will also be benefited no so kung naatay mga new ways methods of doing things we have to excel in them and we have to improve them and excel no in them so increase flourish grow in our new way of doing community life no i really encourage you because we are facing a new day no really make a decision no and extra effort make extra effort to grow in this strange extraordinary times you cannot afford to be lax at this time or to be passive no you have to make an effort no the church will help you no will help provide means ways and means but you need to exert effort no uh, make a decision to grow also 
So that's the second one. The third one is now. Um, so I'll I'll go back to that verse. No, I'll still talk about increase and flourishing and grow in our new way of doing community life. No, verse seven said, "Pray to the Lord for it." No, for the situation, because or sorry, pray to the Lord for the new things we have learned. No, the new ways of doing things. We need to pray for it. Because if it prospers, we will also prosper. No, that's what verse seven said. No, so let us not complain. No, so ang atu agit siguro karon is we should not complain that these things are happening. No, let us not point fingers and blame people. Larga larga mangod mo China, larga larga mo Italy, nagdalara mo virus dere. No, wala na nay mahimo ang mga complaints. Pero what we can do now is to excel and prosper in our new methods, our new ways of doing things, our mechanisms ng mga bago. And when they become excellent, all of us will also prosper. Amen? So, dasigun tamo to do that. No? And third, ng exhortation din hi, adapt and move on. No? So, I think this is also what's uh, kanibitang mga mag-break up, no? mo man ang advice, no, adapt, nag-break up naman mo, adapt and move on. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> Let's adapt. We cannot go back to the old times, the olden days, the, the, the good old days, wala na. No, we have to adapt and move on, okay? Do not long anymore for the good old days, okay? Seek peace, no? And prosperity in the midst of our captivity. What is our captivity? The COVID-19 pandemic. Mo na ang ato ang captivity. So seek peace. No, do not curse COVID. No, do not call it COVID-19 pandamay. Ayaw. COVID-19 pandemic na. Just bless the Lord. In spite what happens, Lord. Okay, ka, Lord. Dili pandamay ang COVID. <laughs> We will move on, adapt and move on. No, so ang mga keywords nato diri, keywords I wrote them down here: adapt, move on, survive, <laughs> grow, flourish, propagate, and expect greater things. Pag makalabang taan ni mga igsoon, there's a glorious future ahead of us. That's what Jeremiah promised there. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, no, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. No, mo mana ang future nga nag-await sa atua. So we just need to adapt and go through this and trust the Lord. No, so we must adapt to God's extraordinary will and strange ways. No, keywords nato on sa ganito. Adapt. Move on, survive, grow, flourish, propagate, expect great things in spite of everything. And third point nako, we must await the beautiful future God has prepared for us. Amen. Because the future is wonderful ang nag-await sa atua. Beyond this is a wonderful future. I believe beyond this will be a stronger TJFM, no, a stronger worship team, a stronger Caleb, no, a stronger youth ministry, a stronger brethren. Beyond this, basa mo survive lang ta, no, basa mo grow lang ta in this time. It will be a glorious future for all of us, no. So, the, it's a beautiful prophecy, no. Verse ten uh, to eleven, no. Uh, when 70 years are completed, I will come back to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you. No, ginoonay naging unana. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. No, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, I am not planning to harm you. No, I have plans to prosper you. No, plans to give you hope. And a future, no. So the Lord reassures them that even though they think God has abandoned them, He has not 
forgotten them. So do, do not forget that. No, when you are all alone in your house, do not think God has abandoned you. God is with you. No, even though things looked opposite, the opposite of what they expected, the Lord was preparing for them hope for the future. No hope and a future, no dito sa Hebrew, if you look at the grammar there, it is literally it literally reads an end and a hope. No, so nagandam the Lord is preparing for them an end and a hope. A good ending di prepare sa Gino and a hope ang gi prepare sa ila sa Gino. So I believe that's also for us. No, beyond this is a beautiful ending. Beyond this, that's what I believe in. No, so let's expect that. No, so hope and a future kana nga phrase is a figure of speech. No, which really means a hopeful end. So guapo nga ending, hopeful nga ending. No, so we have a glorious end, and we also have a wonderful hope. No, beyond this, beyond the seventy years, that's what they were expecting. No, so uh, there is a divine. So let's read this together. No, kining na there is a slide. No, it says there is a beautiful divine purpose in everything that is happening. Amen. Let's believe that. No, there is a beautiful divine purpose in everything that's happening. If we flow with God's work, we will experience a glorious end, and that is our wonderful hope. Amen. Pero na condition, no? Take note, na condition for that promise to be fulfilled. Simple ra, very simple ang condition sa Ginoo. Repentance and learning wisdom. Remember point 1, learning wisdom. We are to learn our lesson and we are to repent. No, that's what the Lord asked them to do. No, verse 12, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So, I condition it so on. So, we are to learn wisdom and we are to repent no, of things in these difficult times. So, Guapo Pudinga time, it's a great time to do reflection no? because we have more time with our family, we have more time with God. No, we can do a lot of these things. And verse 14, I will be found by you. Makitan ko ninyo when you seek me with all of your heart. Makitan ko ninyo and I'll bring you back from captivity. We are to continually entreat the Lord. No, manawag ta sa iyaha and He will listen. Okay, so the promises are contingent on our wholehearted repentance and learn learning wisdom. And then the Lord will listen to us. No, so ang atong future, what awaits us? No, ingon dito, verse 14, I will gather you from all the nations where I have banished you. Actually, this is prophetic. It's prophetic for Israel. It's also prophetic for all of us. Because it's not just talking about the return. No, katong ipa-return tamo. It's not just talking about that. No, so prophetic na siya. So it looks far beyond the Jews return from Babylon. It actually predicted you know, their future restoration from worldwide dispersion. And it already happened actually in 1947 when Israel once again became a state, a recognized state. So katong dispersion of the Jews, ang ilahang return home has been fulfilled you know, starting in 1947. So Israel again, once again, became a nation, okay, in 1947. So na fulfill, no, katong verse 14 ni Jeremiah. Pero there's still a future pagyod, no, that is not only applicable to Israel but also includes all of us, the people of God, no, because the ultimate fulfillment of verse 14 is the kingdom of Christ. No, when all of us. No, will come to him. No, na I prophesy did to. No, in the Bible, that God's people will visit Jerusalem every year. No, and pay homage to our King Jesus Christ, and it will happen in the age to come. Amen. 
I pray you are encouraged, my dear brethren. So our challenge, we must learn wisdom in all of this situation. Number two, we must adapt to God's extraordinary will and strange ways. Number three, we must await the beautiful future God has for us. God bless you, our beloved TGFM family. Keep safe no, and be at peace. Amen. Lord, I commit to you, everyone, bless everyone in TGFM family. Lord, in these next few days and weeks and maybe months, Lord, we might not be seeing each other. We will miss each other's company. But Lord, thank you because you are with us. And thank you, Lord, for technology. We can, there are still ways and means that we can connect to one another. Lord, help us become creative, Lord, in continuing our community life. Bless everyone. Bless every family. Dispel every anxiety, every fear, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy upon all of us. Lord, I commit to you, everyone, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.